welcome back to Let's Play God of War. I'm Burning Dog Face. And last time... Well, last time I spent seven hours getting my ass kicked by uh, Sigrun, Queen of the Valkyries. But in the end, I triumphed, and among other things, we claimed Retribution. An enchanted axe uh, pommel. I think that was the yeah, pommel. That uh, makes the axe's uh, light throw attack keep going forever without paying attention to pesky things like gravity. And I've loaded the game and discovered that the portal is still back. Can I just fight her forever? Is that how hardcore she is? I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure I do have, uh... Yeah, there it is, Sigrun's helmet. I do have that. So I'm just gonna push B on this and probably load a checkpoint. Oh. Huh. <laughs> that was one of the realm tears? Oh, God. 15, uh, thou even 15,000 experience doesn't feel like enough. I didn't get anything for that one. I guess I just needed to do it. There was just a rock wedged in place. Oh well, I guess that's done. Um, yes, this time... Well, there's nothing left. I've done everything I wanted to do, and there's nothing left to do but go home. I do have a couple of pit stops to make along the way, though. So, uh, let's get to it. No, actually, let's not. I wanted to do a thing first. Hey, first of all... Shout out to Edric, who left a comment saying, Here's some life advice by Odin in the mythology. A foolish man thinks he will live forever, if he bewares of battle. But old age will give him no peace, even if spears give it to him. I like that. It's, uh... Surprisingly chill for Odin, frankly. Uh, I'd also like to mention that during the hundreds of attempts I was uh, throwing myself at Seagrun, and I have to admit it was probably kind of impossible before I switched armors, although I got close enough that I'm pretty sure I hypothetically could have beaten her in the Muspelheim armor, just, you know, I'm glad I switched anyway. Yeah, I didn't realize that, uh... Well, I knew you have to emphasize, you know, your level up in the corner over your stats. That's why I wasn't, like, hyper-fixating on the actual numerical stats. I was just kind of playing with those throughout the uh, uh, campaign. But I didn't realize, like, I thought when a higher level enemy starts doing less damage to me, I thought that's because my armor was better. It turns out, uh, the less, n you know, for... <laughs> If a monster is three levels above you, it will literally and objectively do less damage to you, or do more damage to you, rather, than if you're if it's two levels higher than you, or one level higher than you. So by switching from the Muspelheim armor to the Niflheim armor, I went from six to seven, uh, Sigrun's health bar changed from purple to orange, and it became significantly possible. You know, her stomp attack became devastating instead of lethal. And I thought that was interesting. But also in those hundreds of attempts, I, uh, heard a number of lines I wasn't familiar with from, uh, Ratatosker, since most of those runs I started out by having, uh, Atreus get me some rage. So here's just a bunch of random crap from Ratatosker. Just as soon as I get this. Come on! You're fine! Oh, happy to be of service. No, kindly fuck off. You called me for this! Renatoskar saves the day... again! Oh, please! Walk it off! What if you try swinging the axe? You called me for this! Right after this. What a fucking dope! Rude! No 
respect for my time. This will be the 30th attempt at the jump the cut. Try not getting hit. Yeah. That is not the first new line I have heard from Ratatoskar in this fight, which is really weird. But right you barely have a scratch. Try swinging the axe. Instead of having it lie and live like a dick. God damn. And, uh, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, but 116 attempts to beat a boss kind of blur together, so I can't actually remember if I did it in the very last run or not, but I did want to make it clear to you guys that I did manage to avoid looking away from that, uh, the, the, the wing clap blinding attack a few times. So here's one of those. Okay. Having said that, I could really use a change of scenery, so now we get to this stuff we need to do. One last time, let's warp to Brock's uh, store. Brock's shop, sorry, in Tears Temple. See, when I was checking what you know, percentages the uh, the player of players had the achievements for uh, you know the Ravens and the Valkyries, I noticed uh, I've gotten almost all the achievements. By the way, I uh, I noticed that among the ones I don't have are two I think I can still get. Hey guys. Guess who beat the Queen of the Valkyries? Let's see if you can use this helmet. Now you're talking. Hard. Not bad. But I want to save my uh, resources to see if I can. Uh... Alright. I do remember uh, making some of it. Yeah, apparently, there's achievements for making certain suits of armor, not upgrading them fully, just making them. And I guess I never made uh, the, the, the fullness of some of these. Ah, there it is, the Belt of the Ancients. And I can make that, certainly. Reinforced plates grant the uh, imbued with the power of an ancient's heart. Grant this armor resistance to all elemental damage. It proudly, you some bitch. Thank you. Achievement unlocked. Primordial. To obtain ancient armor set. Go figure. <laughs> uh, I, th I really wanted to make the ancient set, but I was so intimidated by the ancients themselves that I put it off long enough that it wasn't, you know, good. It wasn't as good as what I was wearing anymore, so I never bothered to finish it. Now, where... Maybe I have that one already. Gauntlets of the Traveler. Reinforced with battle-hardened metal scraps from the Traveler's armor. Increases vitality for warriors strong enough to wear it. Be too careful now. And Breastplate of the Traveler. Reinforce the metal hard... Uh, oh, it's just exactly the same description as the other piece. I'm sure that'll keep you out of trouble. Thanks, Brock. Where were we on that other thing? I guess that'll have to wait. And for quite a while, actually. Achievement unlocked. Path of the Zealot. Obtain Traveler Armor Set. That feels good. Mouse over them, or select over them, I don't know what to call it when you're using a D-pad. They do look pretty sick, I'm not going to lie. I like that it's a unique armor uh, design that doesn't share itself with anything. Oh, actually, I did want to check Let's one other thing. Let's get you squared away, then. Okay, first, we'll just do these. Okay, then... Uh...
Shattered Gauntlet of Ages. Okay, uh, fully upgraded. I don't know that I can do that. I will try! No. Hack silver? Can I just sell a bunch of junk? Oh, I could, but there's so much of it. I'll get for these. And how much do I need? All right, I guess I should just... I have a comment on that, then. You know, backup plan. Because I was told about this just today in a comment. But while we're standing here... You know, just for the road. One superior resurrection stone. A magical stone that revives Kratos from death with a large amount of health. Press X and Kratos dies to allow Atreus to resurrect him and rejoin the fight. Only one resurrection stone can be carried at a time. You never know what'll happen over the next few years. Guess that worked out. Uh, sorry, let me just, uh... It's over. Here it is. Shout out to Derek Floyd, who left a comment just less than an hour ago, saying, Once you have a fully upgraded Shattered Gauntlet of Ages, attach three of these six enchantments to it. And Vari's Soul, Asgard's Shard of Existence, or Reality, Eye of the Outer Realm, or Space, Evaldi's Corrupted Mind, Muspelheim's Eye of Power, and Niord's Temporal Stone. Using the talisman's power with three of those enchantments will release a powerful homing projectile. So it is a reference to the Infinity Stone and the Infinity Gauntlet. Hell yeah! <laughs> That's really silly! Alright. Brock, Sindri, I'm going away. For a while, at least. And I don't know whether Kratos... And Atreus plan to uh, come visit you guys in the next three years, or if they are just going to hole up at home and be hermits, you know, with the training. But either way, I'm glad I got to know you. I'm glad to call you my friends. I'm glad we had these collaborations and made sick armors. I'm very glad you enhanced my weapons to such an impeccable degree. And I'm very glad I was able to help you guys get back together even if a large part of that was owed to Atreus being a little shit at the time. <laughs> Water under the bridge, boy, don't worry about it. Um... So, yes. It's been an honor, guys. And I hope to see you again uh, when Ragnarok rolls around. Until then, goodbye, Holdra brothers. It's been real. Okay. Now I gotta go do something incredibly stupid. Something I would never normally have done, which I was told specifically to do, because I never normally would have done it. We are going... to visit Freya who hates our goddamn guts and swore horrible agonies upon us the last time we saw her. This is a terrible idea. I cannot guarantee this is not going to be a non-standard game over. I was just told you're going to want to see this. Oh, uh... You know, I was originally planning to follow this by, uh, warping to the temple one more time and, uh, you know, just boating all... Uh, taking a manual path all the way home. Uh, ahem, all the way home. Except that, uh... You know, I was reminded last night that I can't do that because we took a path through the river pass to get here, and Freya put the, uh... As we discovered, Freya uh, put the, the wall of thorns and vines back up. 
so we can't get from her property to the, uh, you know, to the Witchwood, I think it was called. Uh, yeah, well, oh, Wildwood, the Wildwood. We can't get to the uh, through uh, through the Wildwood from Freya's property, and she's probably not going to be in the mood to, uh, you know, open the door for us. So I'm going to do this, and then uh, go to the Wildwood's edge. How's that? But, uh, you know, since I'm standing here... I just wanted to thank this boat, and all the other boats we've encountered on our journey. Oops. I'd like to thank my controller for, uh... ...for behaving. It's been real. I've really enjoyed these journeys and the little conversations they had on these uh, trips. All right, one more time. All ashore who's staying ashore. Oh, wow. I didn't notice that Retribution did that. She's just going to be at the top ready to stab me in the face or something. Oh, no, she can't. Right. Her, uh, revenge is going to have to be clever and indirect. Unfortunately, she's going to have three years to plan it! I should have known that it would be switching to the armor in my favorite color. The second I saw the Niflheim armor, I thought, holy crap, that looks awesome, it has health regeneration, and I desperately want it, but I'm trying to try not to, uh, long for it. Because my, uh... Because I didn't think I would ever be able to get that many, uh... Mist uh, Echoes. Is it a good idea coming back here? She's probably in there planning your demise, brother. Or bringing Balder back to life. Like she did you, Mimir. Oh, I'm not alive, lad. I'm reanimated, sure. But make no mistake. I'm still quite dead. I'll never be what I once was. She won't want this for her son. Trust me. That's a relief. Not the part about you being dead, but... You know. I think that's what they were talking about then. I didn't realize Mimir was dead dead. He called himself a decomposing head at one point. Does that mean he's actually slowly rotting? Oh, that sucks, man. I'm sorry. I don't even know if he'll be around by the time we get to the sequel. Yep. Well, hopefully, you know, the enchantment saves off literal decay. There was uh, a bit in there about Brock and Sindri doing a bunch of measurements on, uh... on, uh, uh Mimir's head before they, you know, abandoned him. You know, when we had to then watch him as we went to go to, uh, Jotunheim. The measurements part made me imagine, like, that the next game, the Brothers Big Project, is going to be building a mere robot body or something. <laughs> I had kind of wondered about that, since, you know, she had that ability. Are we going to be seeing Baldur coming after us again? But if the guy didn't like not being able to feel anything while he was alive, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't enjoy being undead. And I guess that does answer that question. Mimir doesn't need to eat, sleep, or drink, or anything. So it doesn't matter that he doesn't have a stomach or any of those things. He just exists. So I must say, you are the most polite undead I have met in a very, very, very long time. All right. And honestly, I'd kind of rather not be doing this. I kind of wish I could skip the part where I actually have to finish this and just skip ahead to tomorrow. To after I've already finished. Oh, wait. 
You know, if I'm going to be doing that... Okay, I'm here on the summit for no other reason than... Well, actually... Hee <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. It's even faster on the return now. Nice. This thing is going to be motherfucking lethal. Oh, that's right. The uh, Everything resets to level one. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. I just wanted to do this. And uh, properly acknowledge, you know, the transition area. No, not Land Soother. Ah, uh, fuck. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's fix that. Ahem. Continue. Oh my god, it was even further than I thought. From here to... Here. Oops. Hey, Yggdrasil. All ancient and, and, and uh, unknowable and stuff. Thank you for holding up the world. Thank you for providing this, you know, convenient little transitional area. Thank you for constantly surprising my son. And thank you for being really cool and making, you know, fast travel and realm travel possible. I guess I'll see you in three years. Bye. Oh, I can't set that as my, uh, goal. I can't set anything as my goal. Okay, why? That's not ideal. Uh, that was just treasure. I remember that spot. God, which direction am I meant to be going in? Well, I'm assuming to be going in this direction, somehow. So maybe if I go this way... Ooh, bubbling mud. There's a hot spring under there. Yeah, this feels right. This is the room where we killed all those guys. Can we open? Oh, we can't open that door, can we? Ah, fuck. Best laid plans of everyone. Can we get out of this place? Ah, oh, well. I'm actually really disappointed by that. I thought I'd have more time for reflection and stuff, you know? I guess I do have to fast travel home after all. And that's kind of a shame. Um... Well, while I'm standing here, I want to do some shout-outs then. Shout-out to Yornik, who leaves a comment saying, Sigrun is a badass on the level of Kratos, so fighting her seems ill-advised. Come on, man. Ask her out for coffee or something. Perhaps you have more in common, apart from being crazy strong and masterful. <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, I was thinking it's a real shame that I don't get to like read out your guys' you know, congratulations for beating Sigrun, because you haven't actually seen that episode yet as of time of recording. Ah, oh, well. I do have one other uh, shout-out to make. One more shout-out to Edric. who has been left so much interesting mythology information. Who says, uh, Sigrun means victory rune. This Valkyrie is the daughter of King Hogni. In her story, her father promised her hand to the son of King Granmar, Hod Brother. Uh, but Sigrun didn't want to marry the prince, because according to her, he wasn't worth a cat's kitten. She falls in love with a Viking warrior, Helgi, instead, and asks him to fight for her hand. 
So Helgi reunites his armor, and they go across the sea to King Granmar's kingdom. On the way there, Helgi's fleet goes through a storm, but in the sky they see nine Valkyries and their flying horses, and among them is Sigrun. Acting as Helgi's guardian angel, Sigrun calms down the storm. Once Helgi arrives at his destination, the battle begins. Sigrun and her eight Valkyries fight alongside Helgi, and they defeat King Granmar's army, including his son. After that, Sigrun and Helgi married and had children. This version of the story is a happy ending, but another version of it? Not so much. Having said that, I really appreciate that the last story you chose to share with me was, uh, you know, a cheerier one. What? Oh, yes, yes. I really feel like I've grown as a person since I started this game, you know? It's kind of crazy. I understand why they call it the campaign The Journey. Because it really feels like I've been on one. I could, I could go to that hidden chamber of Odin there. But then I'll be coming into the backyard, and that would be weird. So, what the hell? Let's do this. Uh, hey, Grossil, sorry about this. It was just another misunderstanding on my part. Those idiots locked themselves in with us. They had no way of getting out once they'd eaten us. Oh, that's right, there was a bar on the outside. They were already trapped in there, I forgot. Oh no, it was those kind. Ah well. As I said, worth a shot. Ah. <sighs> Oh! Oh, uh, and I learned a thing. Jormungandr was speaking English the entire time. I mean, it's drawn-out, distorted English. My friend Ronan Drake compared it to whale-speak from uh, Finding Nemo. But, uh... I s he sent me a video last night, once I said I was finished with the final challenge. It was just the me the first meeting with Jormungandr with subtitles placed over his words, and god damn, I could actually understand them once with, with the words right there. The first time he pops up, he says, I know you, ghost of Sparta. Find Mimir. He will help you. And then he goes and lies down somewhere else. I don't know what he said the other times, but fuck, man, that kind of blew my mind. Right. Okay. We're finally home. Feels like a lifetime ago. Bit drafty, maybe. It's a right improvement over having tree bark in your tadger. Oh. Oh, that's really unfortunate. This fucking treasure. I bet this is like 31 hack silver. <laughs> a little toy. It's a little statue of a, uh, of an ogre. Oh, what the fuck? What the hell? Okay, I decided I wanted to go for that last toy, but, uh, some regular enemies popped up on the way home, so what the hell? One last fight. Oh, yeah! Shit, I didn't even tell you guys. I messed with the, the equipment in that uh, uh, throughout that last fight with uh, Sigrun. So, uh... What did I put on? Uh, yeah, that's good. Oh! I don't need Valkyrie's Bane anymore. I'll never need Valkyrie's Bane again. Let's get something sick. Um...
like... Oh, I know. Come on. Heart of Midgard. Because that's who you are, Kratos. You are the Heart of Midgard. And I also put on uh, the Eye of Runic Mastery to take less damage during the uh, the fight. The uh, the Runic Attack uh, animations. And then I switched uh, the, uh, the uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, the the Talisman of the Realms for the Amulet of Kvasir, because I felt that manually triggering one Realm Shift wasn't as useful as automatically triggering a bunch by accident. What the? <laughs> Ow! Oh, that's right, that's what made me want to pause it in the first place, I forgot. Yes, I put on this uh, shield because it's all the same shield. It's all the, sh the shield granted to uh, Kratos by Faye. But I wanted to equip, you know, our friends and family are supporting us. This is what's getting me through this fight. So that's what I did here, the Buckler of the Forge. How dare you. You know, the best part is, Done. with the Valkyries around fighting, or the Valkyries free and doing their thing again, they probably not, those zombies probably aren't going to get replaced. So we've, you know, scared the shit out of the uh, Aesir uh, hard enough for them to ignore us for the next three years and leave us alone, and we've, uh... Thinned out the ranks of Draugr. I never did find out how to get down there. Was that that last treasure there? Oh, well. See, this game always has secrets. Huh. Wouldn't it be something if I could get that right now? Just a door here, man. I've been a fool. Prepare yourself. Sorry, the game alt tabbed by itself and stopped recording. It's just a drill. Oh, hey! I was gonna make a joke about this. They're level one. This is a scripted fight I was supposed to get at the beginning of the game before we found the uh, that first troll boss. Three hundred twenty-three hacks over. That's actually pretty good for the beginning of the game. Want to see what we can trade those for? Hell yeah! I got all the toys. You found the anti Aesir bazooka. <laughs> oh, what the hell, I'm not coming back. Oh, yes. I forgot the entire reason I was doing that. Uh, lost and found. And it's a little soldier man with twin spears. No, my son, we are not lost. We're going home. I found it interesting, you know, in the previous games, the Blades of Chaos were the weapon, you know? Like, you could get a bunch of other weapons, but it was always, this is a secondary weapon. This is something you switch to in, uh, you know, when you're not using that. You know, it's like, oh, there's like five maximum levels to the uh, the Blades of Chaos, but only like three or four for the secondary weapons. It was always it was meant to emphasize, you know, you can use this as a weapon, but Kratos' weapon is the Blades of Chaos. You know, 
it's a, it's a PS2 game, and they continued rendering the blades on his back when he was using other weapons, for God's sake. I'll see what's up ahead. Hard to do that from back there, son. I can't believe I didn't see that fucking door. Uh... I was starting to say, yeah, but in this game, it's interesting to me that, uh... Well, you know, one, there's only two weapons. And, uh, two... They really treat them equally to each other. Where was that a hundred hours ago? Maybe it's, way of, maybe it's this game's way of suggesting that, you know, just as much as the Blades of Chaos, as much as wh who Kratos used to be will always, unfortunately, be a part of him, who he is now is just as fundamentally important. Beautiful game. Especially in the snow. All right. No word of a lie, I feel like I'm about to say goodbye to some friends in real life, you know? <laughs> I haven't gotten that since the first time I finished a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. Okay. Kratos, Atreus, Mimir, I have to go. I'm glad that you have accomplished so much, and I want you to know that I am deeply, truly, and immensely proud of you. You have stood up to and overcome every challenge that was placed in your way. And that I... means so did I. Mm, yeah. This way. That's an idle line, so... I'm actually really proud of myself for overcoming this challenge. I, I've never beaten an optional super boss before. That's awesome. Shame about all the trees after the uh, the fight with Balder. But I guess even those can be replaced, huh? So... Oh, he didn't follow me. Yeah, let's just do this. Kratos of Sparta? You are a better man now than I ever knew you before. You are a good man. And I hope you continue down the path of redemption. That's not something I could ever say before. Um... This one? Atreus, also known as Loki. You have grown so much, learned so much, and faced things that no 11-year-old should ever have to. And you've come through it so promisingly that I'm... I'm just sure you are the shining future of Midgard. Keep up the good work, kid. And Mimir, I know there's not much you can do, but these guys could really, really use your advice, so go on being the smartest man in the world. Just remember that intelligence and wisdom are not the same stat. Speaking of Dungeons and Dragons. So, you know, even if you are the smartest man in the world, remember to listen to... All right. I can't be a member of your family. I can't stay with you guys. Um, this but one. I'm truly proud to call myself your friend. 
And I am really going to miss you. Okay, let's get in a position for that, and... I love you guys. <laughs> I'll see you... If and when Ragnarok comes to PC, knock on wood. And until then, you guys have yourselves a nice rest. You've earned it. Time to rest. I'm gonna sleep through winter. Oh yes, the hole in the roof. Alright, there's work to be done. But I'm sure you guys can handle it. Aren't you tired? Okay, this'll do. Sleep. Way ahead of you. Shit. 